need light. I need light. Oh, okay. Here, we'll go by the uh, the front. <laughs> yeah, and then the lights on. Which one are you gonna do first? This is nobler, man. I'll do, I'll do, the, uh, I'll do the, the, I'll do the cliche last, and then I'll do the two more difficult ones first. Well, I'll just do them in order of like difficult. Uh, so there's the cliche one that every actor, any actor, should know, which is Act Two, Scene. What, are you ready? Yeah. All right. So you know you're familiar with Hamlet. Yes. I'll break it down. Chinatown playground. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hamlet father. Okay. Be the king. Hamlet be the prince of Denmark. Mm -hmm. What happened was Hamlet's father, mm -hmm, he got killed and whacked by his uncle, who then incestuously, hypothetically, allegedly, is fucking his mother. But Hamlet didn't know this except for the ghost of his father who comes down and is like, Hamlet, ah, nigga, your uncle killed me, and here's how he done it. With the shoe up, you up, and the click, click, boom, and the, and the poison goblet. Now, you's a bitch. You ain't worthy of the throne. You need to avenge me. And Hamlet was like, yo, my nigga, that's crazy. How do I know you're not a demon? Demons are so crazy powerful and all that. So Ophelia thinks he's gay, his friends think he's crazy, Ophelia kills herself, he's going nuts, yeah, yeah, that's poor York, really, York's just a skull. What happens is, Hamlet has to find his balls and become a man, and the only way he does that is, he takes a break, he goes to Arclight, which is really a play inside a play, where he goes and sees a play. In that play, he's so moved to tears by this other actor, that he decides how, and by what means, in what way, in what order, he's going to find out if the ghost, A, is really his father, or a ghost, B, how to be a man, C, what to do about it, in the vengeance uh, of his father's death. And therefore, I digress. <coughs> wow. Oh, what a rogue. What a rogue and peasant slave am I. Is it not monstrous that this player here, but in a fiction, in a dream of passion, could force his soul so to his own conceit, that from her workings all his visage won. Tears in his eyes, distraction in his aspect, a broken voice, and all forms fitting his conceit, and all for nothing, for Hecuba. What's he to Hecuba? Oh, well, heck you, but to him, that he should weep for her. What would he do had he the motive and the cue for passion that I have? Well, he would drown the stage with tears and cleave the general ear with horrid speech, make mad the guilty and appall the free, confound the ignorant and amaze indeed the very faculties of eyes and ears. Yet, I, a dull and muddied, meddled rascal, peak like John A. Dreams, unpregnant of my cause, I can say and do nothing, no, nothing, not for a king, not for my father, not for a king, upon whose property a most dear life but damned defeat was made. Am I a coward? Am I a coward? Am I a coward? Then who calls me villain? Calls me villain. Breaks my pate across my brow, plucks off my beard and blows it in my face, tweaks me by the nose, or gives me the lie of throat, the lie of throat as deep as to the lungs. Who does me this? Swounds. Demons. Demons. I should take it. I should take it, for it cannot be but I am pigeon livid and lack the balls to make this oppression better. Or ere this. Ere this. I should have fatted all the reason kites with the slaves. Awful, awful. The bloody, body, villain. Remorseless, treacherous, lecherous, kindness, villain. <laughs> vengeance. Oh, vengeance. Why, what an ass am I? This is most brave that I, the son of a dear father, murdered. Prompted to my revenge by heaven and hell, must like a whore unpack my heart with words and fall, a cursing like a very drab, a scullion, a scullion. No, a stallion, yes, fie upon foe. Fie upon foe! About my brain, hm, I have heard that guilty creatures, while sitting at a play, have by the very cunning of the scene presently been so struck as to have proclaimed 
the malfactions for murder. Though it have no tongue, we speak with most miraculous an organ. I'll have these players play. Something like the murder of my father before my uncle. I'll observe his looks. I'll tent him to the quick. If he do so much as blench, I know my course. The spirit that I have seen may be a devil. And the devil hath power to assume a pleasing shape, yes? And perhaps out of my weakness and my melancholy as he is very potent, the spirit abuses me to damn me. But I'll have grounds more relative than this. You see, the play, the play is the thing. Where now kiss the conscience of the false and would-be king? Two. Wow, dude, that was amazing. Be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is no burn the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing end them. To die, to sleep, to sleep perchance the dream. Aye, there's the rub, for in that sleep of death what dreams may come when we have suffered off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the insolence of office of the law's delay. For the spurns the patient merit of the unworthy man takes when he himself might as quiet as make with a bare bodkin, who would these fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life? But for the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country, from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will. It makes us rather bear those ills we have than to fly to others we know not of. Thus, Conscience doth make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution is sickly o'er with the pale cast of thought. And in enterprises of great pith and moment with this regard there, currents turn awry and lose the name of action. The softy now. Feel, feel it. You know, my sins remember. Three. <clears throat> that was good, man. Good job. And the finale. And the finale. And the finale. The finale. The finale. The finale. The finale. Thou art the ruins of the noblest man that ever lived in the tide of times. Woe to the hand that shed this costly blood. Over thy wounds now do I prophesy, which like dumb mouths do ope their ruby lips to beg the voice and utterance of my tongue. War shall come to the hands of men. Domestic fury and fierce civil strife shall cumber other parts of Italy. Blood and destruction shall be so in use, and dreadful objects so familiar, their mothers shall but smile when they behold their infants quartered with the hands of war, all pity choked with custom of fell deeds, and Caesar's spirit, <laughs> ranging for revenge, with I by his side, come hot from hell, <laughs> shall from these confines, and with the monarch's voice, Cry havoc! And let slip the dogs of war. Where this foul deed shall smell about the earth with carry on men, dying men, groaning, groaning for burial, for burial. <laughs> that was awesome.